happy St. Patrick's Day. I hope you were all wearing green. And okay, so we are gonna make some fun shamrocks today. We're also gonna talk about Georgia O'Keeffe. Georgia O'Keeffe lived from November 1887 to March of 1986. So, um, she was 98 when she passed away, and she was super famous for her really huge enlarged flowers. They were gorgeous, they were very brightly colored, and she used art and painting as a way to obviously express herself and tell how she felt. And she got very, very frustrated with the way they were teaching her to paint because she did not feel as though she was able to properly express what she wanted to express. And what kind of inspired her and really influenced her was photography. Because with a camera, what can you do with a camera when you're taking a picture? You can zoom in, you can crop the picture, you can get really close to someone's face. And then it looks different. If you get really, really up close to a flower, it looks completely abstract. Because you're not getting the whole picture of the flower, you're just getting a portion of it. So that's what she really enjoyed. And she would also create pictures of um, the New York skyscrapers and of the New Mexico landscape. And she relied heavily on her oil pastels in the beginning of her career. But then she started to lose her eyesight and she could only see basically out of the corners of her eyes, so her peripheral vision. Um, so she had someone come in and help her to paint her art, because if you can only see out of the sides, it's very difficult. So if you move your hand, then all of a sudden you can, you can all of a sudden see it out of the corner of your eye. It's very hard to do anything like that, so she would need assistance to actually paint what she wanted to paint. Um, but she also said, that for someone that paints a lot of flowers, she didn't like flowers. She actually said she hated painting flowers, but she painted them because it was cheaper than painting models and they were still. So there you go. A little something kind of crazy and different. So today we're gonna do shamrock pictures. You are going to need scissors, glue, an eight by eight piece of construction paper, an eight by eight piece of white paper, crayons, and watercolors. So first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take our paper and we are gonna fold it so that the corners match up and you turn your square paper into a triangle. And go ahead and make a crease. Then we're also gonna turn it and fold it in half again to make a smaller triangle. So there you go, we have a smaller triangle. Grab your green crayon and you are gonna turn your triangle so that it is pointing towards you. So it's like an airplane going whoosh towards you. Okay, now if you think about a shamrock or if you think about a clover, a four leaf clover, what do the leaves look like? They look like hearts. So each side of your clover needs a heart. And I'm gonna show you an easy way to do that. Now, you have your paper. And I'm gonna turn it towards you so that you can see. You're gonna make a dot right here in the middle. And from there, you're gonna pull the top of your heart all the way to the side. And then you're gonna repeat that on the other side. So, you've got that. And look, magically, it already looks like a heart. We just didn't draw this side. Now, it's pointing down, right? It's pointing towards you. So what you should not have is you should not have something that looks like this. If you have drawn this direction, this is not correct. This is not correct. 
This is correct. It should make its own heart. So from here, you're gonna flip it over and you're gonna do it again. Start in the middle, make a heart. So when you unfold it, look what you get. So go ahead and unfold it, just your first crease, and you're gonna turn it backwards. So you're gonna fold it in half again backwards so that now you're left with another two blank sides and you are going to repeat the same process that you just did. So you're drawing four hearts. There we go. So when we completely unfold it, it might not match up perfectly, but what really, what Clover really does. And there you go. There's your clover. If you want to fix some of these a little bit and make them go in a little bit more, that's okay because we're going to cut it out. So, there's my clover. Now, go ahead and cut it out. So, here is our end result. Now, as you can see, if you look closely, you can still see my crayon marks. I want you to cut on the outside. Of your crayon line and then you're going to grab your watercolors and you are going to look at this and tell me what colors do you see in here there's some yellow there's some green and there's also some blue on the edges and the way I did this was I painted the very centers yellow then I painted the rest of it green and then I just very lightly put some little blue lines going up the sides of each of my clover leaves. Now, make sure you do not cut all the way to the middle. Like if you look really close, my clover lines don't go all the way to the center because we want our clover to stay together. So go ahead and do that and then you will glue your clover onto whatever color square piece of construction paper you want to and you are done. You can write lucky on the bottom if you feel like it. You can just glue this straight into the middle and that's it. Take a picture and send it to me. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.